it's a bit of a trip to to go out on stage like bone dry sober just not even a drink and just go there and lose yourself in the show i used to have different ways of i used to sort of i went through different phases you know smoking joints before shows thinking i was so wanted to be bob marley you know i was like what's how's this going to be it's like well <laughs> meditative it's like, you're going to curb your yeah. you're going to curb your enthusiasm yeah very meditational right that's that an intense show what were we thinking oh, i was just like, just jamming up there. Today's show is brought to you by Mantis Barbecue Dust. Now, I'm obsessed with this barbecue sauce. It is the exact same in flavor, but only in a dust. In my opinion, perfect for grilling season because you can rub it on your steaks and chicken, uh, on your fish. How about popcorn? And if you ask me, oh, chips, all that good stuff. And if you ask me, the best is on the rim of a Bloody Mary. Now, Mantis Barbecue Dust comes in two flavors, the original, which kicks things up with a bit of heat, and then the Sweet Heat Dust, which starts with a little sweet and finishes with some heat. And 10% of the proceeds are gonna be going back to the Kidney Project, which funds artificial kidney development. Gavin Rosdale, welcome to Not So Hollywood. Thank you. I feel like you were waiting for something big there. You were holding on. Bracing so for Hollywood. dear okay. life. No, no, I'm, no, <laughs> I'm just I'm bracing myself for an amazing interview. Okay, well, it better be nothing short of that. I'm going to ask you at the nothing end. Nothing short. I want a letter grade at the end of okay. how I did, okay? Always been a graduation day for me. I've been watching 38 kids graduate from eighth grade. It's really emotional, actually. It's sort of seeing what these kids have been through, and you see all the... Um, the footage of them from mm. uh, when they first went to the school, first day of school, and getting to know each other and all that stuff, and now they're yeah. So it was it was uh, emotional. It's so fun. it was Zuma. Mm, Zuma. Who, your eight your eighth grader graduating. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's out and did you school. say so? All right. So what does it feel like? Because you're going to be embarking on manhood now, son. Did you quiz him? <laughs> did I do that one? <laughs> um, he was with his mum this week, so he spent the week with on the Facetime with me, just practicing his tie. Oh. And how to tie his tie. And it's really, you know what I mean, when you're doing it, like if you do it sort of in, um, naturally, like it's in your DNA, I don't think about it. So I was having to really break it down. And no, it's that hand. Oh, shoot. That goes over. But he did, he went great. So it was, it was fun. And well, I put you, a tie in for him. By the way, you realize that's a talent that you can even tie a tie anymore because right. nobody can do shit these days. Right. We got the slip on shoes, which by the way, you have. And we have the, then we have the clip on ties. I'm My not sure they're for kid. adults or young kids. Are they clip on ties? <laughs> <laughs> In England, like... we're forced to wear ties every day at school, so it becomes like second nature that you don't think about it. Yes. And that set the stage for much success for you. <laughs> I do want to congratulate you because you have a song in the top 20 right now. Last year, we came off a number one song. Mm. You're killing it. Yeah, it's fun to be on fire in a good way. You, you know, know what I mean? And, and, the, I, and I'm so curious to know what kind of satisfaction that gives you after 30 years of doing this. Um, well, I just love it so much. And like, it, I still find it really mysterious when putting songs together and finding that alchemy, that, that relationship between something to say, singing it right, putting it with chords that kind of support it well, all that stuff. I still find um, really magical. And uh, so I'm really happy to have another hit record. <laughs> it's a I, lot. I, 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 magic would be exactly the way I would describe it. And I have, I have a, a good ear, I think, to hear music, but I have zero talents when it comes to singing or dancing, or anything, but I love to listen to it. It's magic how they come together, these songs. Mm -hmm. And even for you, I, I mean, you're behind it in saying it's magic. Yeah, because, you know, I start, I'm at the process, we have a record that just, just, came out a little while ago, the deluxe version of it now, with an amazing version of A Thousand Years, the song with Amy Lee from Evanescence. Uh -huh. and that is like so special. I'm just on it, but she's incredible. And do you she's realize crazy. these songs, when you make and, them, that they're going to be a hit? Well, no. Are you trying to only keep the ones that you think have a good chance of, um, of surviving? Because I write about maybe 20, 25 songs for a record, so choose 12. Mm. So 
it's always like I try and do it where I don't uh, having too much pressure on every song to be something special. And if I can't think of anything good, I sort of intentionally write a crappy song going, well, we'll just write a shit song to see how that goes. Yeah. You know, if you can't get something great. Um, but you feel intrinsically, I had a bit of a, I was in the studio two days ago and I definitely got some something good together for another song and I was really happy about that. But to me, it's just like... Uh, Life is incredible how it's unfolding and you're just learning more and more and trying to put that into the music. You know, it's meant to be that you have your really big records behind you and then you just kind of make records, you put them out and it was like, oh, that's great. Go to the bar with the new songs and and um, just wait for the old songs. But with us, we try to turn it around where people just go crazy for the new stuff as well. Well, know? and also as a musician, you know, it's so funny because you're saying like a lot of times people peak early, mm -hmm. but you would think as a musician, because you have so much life behind you, mm -hmm. that you're, that actually you get better with age. Yeah, you and should. And you have more perspective. You have more experiences. It makes Is more that, sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. When That's when it's purely like a really vocational craft that you yeah. really put your time and, and love into. So I don't know how it works for anyone else. I just know that I'm having a good time and my band's great. My kids are great. And the sun's out in California. For it's once. a great day. Where the hell do we live? Belgium. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Russia. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to go there. While we're talking about the music before we get on to other stuff, <clears throat> from as from a musician, I've always thought, uh, I've always been intrigued by your lyrics and your words. I think you have a really unique voice and even your biggest hits, the, the ideas and the, the lines, they come from such an interesting spot and are about, it's not just a love song, but there seems to be this earthy, this larger than life quality mm. to them. With that said, uh, when you're writing these songs and you're in the studio, is it starting with the words with you? Because you even said the words, trying to get a voice. At the end, you have these big guitars and these big sounds, but does it start small with the words and acoustic guitar for, for you and Bush, or is it big uh, from the beginning? It, yeah, it's easiest for me. I do different things. Like It's easier. I like to, obviously, um, it, it's really helpful to do things as dynamic way as possible. So sometimes I might get music from someone in my band. Mm. I mm. might sing on that. And that's yeah. like me doing a top line, which is like a, it's like a couple of days off just doing the top lines like a cinch. Right. Because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the backing track. Uh, and um, but really it works best when I have the words where I, I make jokes about. I mean, I, I'm not in their category or their, their, their space, but like I always feel like being Bernie Taupin. And, and and Alton because you know with Elton he sits down with a sheet of lyrics yeah. and that's how he crafts a song. If I have a sheet of lyrics in front of me, I can do a song really really quick. But you then, just throw the words to them to that because well, I have because I just know what that's about. And but but then I do it other ways. If I'm working a lot in the studio, then there'll be times where I just have music and then I go round and round and round. It takes a long time. Yeah. You to find the words, but it comes. So and where you are in your life and inspiration and what's happening, I yeah. bet. Like, and the world, you know, the world and what's going on. I mean, you know, we've got wars and, um, you know, and the climate and the, you know, with more of the machines I was talking about with girls, you're in control, not the government. And mm. just the stuff about that, I wanted to re-reference that Roe versus Wade yeah. uh, madness and stand up for women's rights. And so it's incredible to be have a position where you can say stuff like that and put in a song. And I never put in a song where I kind of think I know, or I'm trying to teach anyone anything. Like I just, it's important for me to just be a, a voice. You know what I mean? And like a discussion, a discussion starter, as opposed to, it's gotta be this way, yeah. you gotta do this and do that. It's like, I think people need to figure out things themselves. They don't need some idiot in a band no, telling them. No, but just put it on the some, yeah. yeah, you just talk about it, you know what I mean? Like, I'd read that once years ago about Neil Young saying that young bands weren't being enough about the topics of the time. And then I saw, how I wrote the song, This Is War, which was about that whole Charlottesville thing, the mm. beginning of the, the madness of the of the Black Lives Matter movement. I don't know if you remember that. Of with course, the, with the yes. Driving the into the thing. car and yep. killed so, someone senselessly, like we hear about every day. Yeah. So uh, and and so that is a big thing. I mean, isn't the guns crazy right now? Just the gun control uh, stuff is just so. There's so many things to talk about along with your own navel gazing heartbreaks that I also get into. Do you have heartbreaks? Because I imagine you're doing a lot of the heartbreaking. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a, it's a give and take, but I certainly get my <laughs> share of it. Isn't it? <laughs> it's, I definitely have not avoided that, uh, that arrow. Recently? <laughs> you know, it happens, yeah. Yeah, I did have a, a, a great 
uh, time with a great person who left me in a spectacular way. And that was, that was unfortunate, but then it really fed into my music. And so I have a really twisted approach to life where I can literally, I can just uh, monetize my pain. Yes. Do you mind breaking up with me? Because I'm ready to uh, put my new album together. Uh, it's very Larry, Larry David of me, but it's like I was saying last night, like I'm like really easy to break up with or, you know, I'm, I'm really easy to cancel on. Anyway, socially, I was thinking about it last night, I was laughing. <laughs> I'm the easiest person to cancel on socially because I don't really want to do that much most of the time because I'm always you. away. So it's like, you can count five minutes before dinner, you can let me know. No, it's not going to work. But boom. I'm gonna, yes, you know. thank God. I've been I'm, waiting for that call. I'm still going to have a nice time with you, but you know, the cancellation, I take it the right way. How... Just tell me, honestly, truth out there, how epic is it to be a world-famous rock star? Because it's kind of every young person's dream. Um, well, Barry, um, he just came from a graduation with the kids and everything. But like also off else. tour, <laughs> off the world tour. Yeah, I came off tour, tour in the UK. Well, I will tell you that, that uh, you know, I, I spend my life either on tour with my kids. You know, mm -hmm. you, you see me with my kids so much. So it's like, um, I do tell them that, the one trouble I do have is when I come off of a tour, I am missing the applause. And if the three of them could figure out a way to congratulate me on bringing food to the table, uh, taking them somewhere, a little round of applause wouldn't go bad. We want to make you feel but, at home, so. But I, but, but, uh, Congrats, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. But no, so I don't, I think it's really important to not take yourself so seriously. So I never sit and reflect on that. I, I like the idea of, um, and I don't mean to be sort of fake about it, but I, the world's so big and there's so many big stars, you, so many big acts in the world. I, I sort of feel, I feel in an altered, like, uh, like I just sort of float around. I don't really go away and just I'm kind of there in the landscape of music. And, and so there's plenty of people who are far more famous and successful than me. So I look at it like I just got away with it that I still get to do this as a job. Well, and that's what I really love. And that's why I'm really enthusiastic when I play shows and I'm quite crazy on stage and loose and physical. It's a very physical thing for me. It's like, it's, it's not just standing there and singing. You know, mm -hmm. some people like to stand there and sing. And I like to tour with those bands because when I go out on stage, it's not like that. It's very uh, energetic. It's a whole performance. Yeah. As, as it should be. You know, you're saying you sort of linger, but and, and two things to that. One, it's like we always talk about how it's kind of not about the sprint, but it is about the long haul because the people who hit really big, I mean, granted, you did hit huge in the 90s, but you, <laughs> the fact that you still are making it to the top of the charts, what a testament. Secondly, I want to say you can't, there's not that many artists when you are watching them that they're singing your lyrics back to you. A tremendous crowd is singing your lyrics back to you word for word. It's amazing. You give me goosebumps thinking about it. You make me indulge in myself. You better. That's pat, what you're pat here for. myself on the back. <laughs> um, you deserve to. It's, uh, it's, it's wild. It is wild. And what blows me away is, because um, I hear it all the time. I hear it when I'm off tour as well, but specifically on tour, if I'm in a town and playing somewhere, there'll be people in the area that, you know, um, and they just tell me how much the songs mean to them, what mm. the words mean to them, and what it got them through in their lives. And so for that, it's really, that's the really, that's my favorite thing, because I don't know, you know what I mean? I sit in my studio, write something, write it down. I, I mean, I hope you're gonna hear it, but I don't know if you're gonna hear it. Like, I hope you hear that last song we brought out, but I don't know if you're gonna hear it personally. So you have these, that's the magic of music. You don't know who's listening to your, your records. And, um, so when I hear that from people, that's when I sort of, I don't know, I, I do feel um, a sense of pride uh, as a unit, because I think we've collectively, the team that's brought the record, um, has done something right, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and Bush, I mean, you guys broke up, what, 2002? Mm -hmm. What? Why? Hey, well, one, the guitar player missed his first kid growing up and said he wanted to oh. take a break. Ooh take a hiatus. So it wasn't, we never broke up. He just wanted to, didn't want to tour for a bit. So I got another guitar player, Chris, who's been with me ever since. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I did a solo record because they didn't want, I was going to get the band together. I did a side project. And then I went to get the band together. I was like, let's do it. They said, no, nah, we're really enjoying this time off. You go, you go do another record. So I did a solo record. Uh -huh. I Love Remains the Same off of that, which is a big song, but I didn't want to be in a solo act. Nobody, nobody wants a rock singer from a band to be a solo, solo. act. It's just... Because it's the whole, it's nobody, that whole show what you're talking about. Nobody wants that. I didn't even want that. And it was just awkward. 
You started Ooh. hating yourself. So, <laughs> yeah, it all continued. So, um, so I, uh, I, that's when I began Bush again in 2010. I was like, I can't do it. I went on tour with my solo act and I was on hot AC and, but I was just smashing up the drum kits and throwing the guitars around. They're like, maybe you need to be back in your world, you know? Yeah. So I did, uh, that's when I began again with Bush with Sound of Winter and um, that whole record. Ever since, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know, I, I feel like I'm As like, long as anyone's in a band, by the way, there's like, what, 13 years? It's like longer than the Beatles. They were only eight years there together. So isn't that unreal? It's just weird, you know? I think it's always interesting to learn about how people started, and you were in England. But what really got me is that you have a father who is a Jewish doctor. I also have that. So I didn't realize that you had Jewish in you. I'm, I'm half Jewish, yeah, absolutely. Very proud of it. I'm not practicing in any way, but well, you know, my family, Jewish. Uh, 1867, they came from Russia. Mm-hmm. So persecuted. My mom is Scottish, so I've got like half Russian, Jew, English, English and Russian. And then the Scottish, um, I have the Jewish blood in me. Scott, my mom's full Scottish, McGregor. My family's McGregor. McGregor. Mm, that's my whole family. So like, like, like Conor McGregor. That I'm not that. But you're clan. not related to him, are you? Yeah, of course I am. I'm a McGregor. Se- you're, are you serious? I'm dead serious. Wait, yeah. what are you? Who cousins? would lie about that? That's the most incredible thing. I love him. So wait, uh, are you guys cousins? Or well, do you? And do you know I don't know. I'm him? Gavin McGregor Rostell, and my kids are all McGregors. Do you do you know each other? Like speak? I have never met him. I'd love to. He's, he's so you are distant cousins. Well, we're definitely from the same bloodline. We're McGregor's. It's, the, it's, a, it's a clan. I thought that was sort of like a smith in the States. No, it's a clan. It's a specific um, thing. Do your kids now, do, have they caught the music bug? Um, I've tried. Zuma, he, he was playing drums. My middle one was playing drums. And so we had a lot of drums in the garage. And the, he didn't, he's getting back into it. But Kingston, who's just turned 17 he's incredible um as a songwriter and singer and oh. musician he's really way better than i was ever at 17 and so uh who knows what the future holds for him but he's recording stuff and super legit and that's what he wants to do and he's nuts but that's it that's oh, he's God. gonna do it you know i mean he's very very good he has this innate ear for melody which is beautiful. It's so funny about parenting. I mean, you, you, you're a great mom, and Thanks. it's uh, it's funny. We we God, we just like just corral those kids. But apparently, there's like 400 character tra- traits from the DNA that come through from our bloodlines. Mm. So meaning that that our kids are pretty not fully formed, but they have incredible amounts of characteristics that are nothing to do with us, and will they'll have them nonetheless, and they're beyond our control. So what I find really amazing with Kingston, for example, on that front is. He, I, he just has this innate ear for melody. It's beautiful melodies. He yeah. chooses to sing. And it's not like, I don't know if he's sat down with anyone and they've said, A, do A, B, and C. He just listens to music he likes. And then he sings the song. He always sings the songs about his girlfriend right now. <laughs> They're all about his girlfriend. It's really cute. Aww. He's got the same girlfriend. And um, he's really great melodicist. Yeah, it's impressive. Is it a certain style? Well, he's gone through, he's he's getting heavier and heavier as he kind of sees the light. He's getting heavier and heavier. Oh. So now it's all... So he's gone to your side. Yeah, yeah. it's all my stuff, which it's, I like, which I, you know, my, my stuff is, like and it. bands that he's inspired by, the are bands that are in my world, you know, people I know, friends of mine. Like who? Deftones. Oh. System of a Down. Slipknot. Wow. All friends of mine, all like really great bands. Does your, do your kids go like, we understand the gravity of having our parents and dad as like a rock star? Nah, I don't think, they, I think they see that at all. I'm like the juice getter. I'm the caterer, which is cool. It's my, I'm happy for that. I, I think it's yeah. healthy. I mean, it'd be very mummy dearest to be sort of like, applaud now, I'm coming in <laughs> louder. <laughs> you louder. This is not loud enough. <laughs> So, no, I, I like it. that i tell you an example of that. Um, a little while ago, uh, it was actually during the pandemic, but it was this best line ever, Apollo. My youngest said to me, he goes, because um, I always, when they leave, it's like 
everything happens. I'm trying to work hard. I'm trying to like have a private life. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, live my dreams. And, uh, and then when they come back, I'm just like, whatever they need. And I really, I'm present for them. And there was one time, it's a couple of years ago now, cause I have been on tour a bit, but he goes, Apollo goes, um, I said, yeah, he goes, dad, do you even work anymore? Oh, stop. <laughs> I was like, I thought that was a really a compliment. It meant that I'd done a really good job of hiding You took it as work. a compliment. Yeah. I'd be like, how dare you? Oh. Don't you understand this business? There's highs and lows. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I thought it was a, it just, it meant that I was, I was just there all the times he needed me. And I just oh. organized my tour well, that's in, a good in the fall, uh, I think the fall tour around his football schedule because I was on tour for his football games. Mm -hmm. And so I had to watch them all on FaceTime. I watched them all FaceTime games. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, sometimes I was actually on stage when he was playing. So I couldn't watch them. And I felt I was, hated that. I went all through the training, all through the preparation. And now I'm not seeing. He was a Scott star QB, you know. Okay. Well, really this came is through. the thing. Should we bring the boys up to speed, Gavin? I know Gavin because our boys played football together and Apollo's really very talented and Gibson, my little rough and tumble crazy boy is too. Um, and so they're kind of out there doing their, but he's got the, the quarterback now. But what I will tell you, and I mean this, is that you were at every practice, Gavin, and every time the moms would like sit in the corner, do you see who that is? He's cute, you know? <laughs> but you were at every practice and every game and always on the sidelines and always supporting always. and such a good dad. Thank you. Yeah, he's he was not very good then. He wasn't finding his feet then. He just suddenly learned how to throw. And mm. so this year, this team you played in, he was doing these like, you know, the ones you want. He does all those big loopy, the, the loopy throws and the, to yeah. the people scoring. Gotta have a good quarterback. It was too. really, really special. Um, yeah, incredible kid. Switching gears for a second, coming out of the 90s, right? Mm. 90s grunge scene. How did you, were, were you into partying and things? Because, and when I say partying, obviously I mean excessive drug use and all that. And I ask because you're so lucky. She said, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I'm a successful yeah, Not just partying, not just like having a girl <laughs> hang in the tour bus and like knocking back a few drinks. I mean, like, look at, we saw so many of the people you came up with uh, not make it out. Yeah. OD. Well, I come from London. So that's like. Not Seattle. Super. Seattle. Yeah. Um, party oriented fun oriented so how was that for you um well for me i was always it's weird uh because so london's really druggy it's really druggy yeah um like any major city right and um but it, it just it seems to fall into two categories that i've always thought in my life and there was the kind of ones who you know had the real uh, um addictions and problems with the heroin and that, that was the really dangerous ones right. that's where it's like where that became, that was their lives, that was their careers, that was everything about them was about that drug. And then there was like, you know, if you were the other side of the thing, like I always wanted to make music. So my, my getting wasted and having a laugh was at the end of a night, at the end of a show, about a session. It was not a nihilist sense of just take, just getting wasted for that, that sake. Do you know what I mean? So there's you weren't a, a drug addict ever, like so many no, people. No, I mean, maybe, but I, I'm not, I was, I'm, I've been too ambitious and like turned on by music and sort of mm. doing that stuff and you know I worked for a long time and didn't achieve anything I was really you know uh, poor and struggling and had turned down by every label and every all that usual story that everyone gets I like hearing those stories that's yeah, that's so important for I people to hear I failed for a long time and got told no I signed I got rejected by every label in England every label in England would knew me and now on the scene to pay for I was in two bands before Bush, so they knew about the band. So I'd get demo time from anyone, but i never get signed. Yeah. EMI, CBS, Food Records, every, everyone. I knew everyone. I know everyone. I knew everyone at the time. And uh, it took a, someone from America taking a chance on me, signing me here in the Valley. Really? Yeah, I signed to an independent label in the Valley. And then I got dropped by Hollywood Records for the distribution. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And I was like back to working, back to my day job. What was the day job? Painting houses, painting dentist offices wow. as a painter. And then, um, and then I never wanted a job where I was any use to anyone particularly. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to go up in the company. Yeah. I always wanted to do music. So I did stuff that just gave me cash at the end of the day. And uh, 
And then they said, um, oh, your record's doing really well on K-Rock. I didn't know what K-Rock was. You know, I was in London. I was like, okay, great. Good, good for K-Rock. And, like, <laughs> and that was the beginning of everything. And I came out here and I played a show at some weird club on, on Santa Monica. I wonder Boulevard, what... really, um, freaks the name of it. But yeah, it was a really cool club. Power went out four times during the show, the first thing. It was just wow. chaos. And wow. then the band took off. 95, we went on tour, CBGB's. Uh, in New York, and then was on tour till last week when I came home. When you that's how it goes. That, I mean, that's how it goes. And then there's the peaks and the valleys, and mm -hmm. in the middle, you're having kids and family, mm -hmm. and um, and apparently a cooking show happening at some point soon. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's really hard. No one's making anything right now, so it's really difficult doing TV. As but, in shows, uh, yeah. Mm, but well, I, it I just bothered TV. me that you are a singer and, and also a cook. I'm like, that's not fair. <laughs> you can't be both. Well, Miles Davis said all musicians should be able to cook. Is that so, where it came from? Yeah, that's, that's, why I, that's why I thought I should pick it up. You know, I only could make two or three things. And then I, when I was mid-early 20s, my friend moved in with my house, and he grew up in a restaurant. He started cooking, and then we started enjoying it, and it just sort of blossomed. And it, I have a real, uh, f like, love of it. Like, I really like it. It doesn't bother me to cook for two days to make dinner. Or be, like, it's like I'm weird about so it. So you're like, literally in the kitchen cooking? All the time. It's my boys the, the, every day. It's called EAT, is that right? Or eat? Yeah, the show is going to be called Eat with Gavin Rosto, and then I have that page on Instagram. Just to kind of show the food I cook at home. And what what are like what are the signature dishes? The signature dishes, I don't know. I mean, I'm being English. I really love to do lots of roast meats. My boys love big roast dinners. So big Yorkshire pudding, ribs of beef, uh, roast potatoes, whatever. All those kind of mad yeah. trimmings. And then I love <laughs> the I vegan can, in me. Yeah, sorry, are you a vegan? Yeah, I, mostly. Yeah, you can have uh, mostly. Mostly. I'm like, no, <laughs> does it I, I, does it work like that? Well. No, it doesn't. But I don't. I, I do eat a little seafood from time to time. Right. But right, all, right. no dairy, none of that shit. Got it. Got it. Got it. You no, know, I see. I mean, I'm a musician, and I also cook every day, as you know. So, but I, I know it sound. It doesn't sound crazy, but it's the same muscles to me. Kind of the the uh, creative muscles when you cook, and the way you see art. it, and the art, and what the plate looks like, yeah. and using. Sometimes when I cook, right, you're creating plates. It's color. It's not just what you're cooking, it's the flavors and hot and spice. It's kind of the muscles. No, I can see it. Texture. Texture, yeah. Are you drinking wine while you're cooking? Fuck yeah. Okay, me too. Good. At least that does. I'm really fun. I think I you, you were are, just wait, looking for an image. I'm really fun. Tell me, I, of course I am. I'm <laughs> you're, picturing You were just looking apron. for an image. Wait, I'm Gavin picturing with the apron glass of with wine. nothing else on underneath with the glass <laughs> of wine. When you say you're fun, what exactly do you mean by that? means that I think that life is to be lived to the fullest oh, and yes. that's it and um i think that uh that's the only speed to go at so you know what i mean i restrictions and things like that i mean i think it's just good everything in moderation or even not everything in moderation even moderation yes isn't that the truth you know on tour is weird because i get bored of drinking like my band can drink really well and i just, i can't Drink and I mean, so I, often on tour, I'll go days without drinks. It's I drink on days off when I go eat, but just I'm always like, what are you going to drink? Oh my God, what are we going to have now? Is it like, is it white wine? Is I it like know. Margarita? That, what are we gonna have? I don't know what to, yes. I'm like, didn't I drink yesterday and I feel rough? Am I doing it again? Yeah. So it's kind of, it's a bit of a trip to, to go out on stage, like bone dry, sober, just not even a drink and just go there and lose yourself in the show. I used to have different ways of, I used to sort of, I went through different phases, you know, smoking joints before shows, thinking I was so wanted to be Bob Marley, you know. I was like, what's, how's this going to be? It's like, well, <laughs> meditative. It's like, you're going to yeah. curb your enthusiasm. Yeah. Very meditational. Right. That was an intense show. What were you thinking? Oh, just, like, just jamming up there. Just, Who are your musical influences? I know you get asked all the time, but um, it's, worth, it's worth the answer, I think. Uh, it's really hard to get away from Bowie. Oh, God, because, do I love Bowie. Heroes. Because... Because he just was too good from all angles. And I was lucky enough. We toured with him a couple of times. Wow. So getting to know, know him. And we, back in the day with Bush, we never opened for anyone. But we opened for him. We went to South America with him. It was like, yeah, fuck. Yeah, of course. What was he like as a guy? Um, just, you know, the weirdest thing is, right? And you've met a lot of people. The mediocre people 
are the most uptight and full of themselves. Mm. And the ones who are really incredible and so talented. Yeah. So I'm talking like, you know, Bowie, McCartney, Tom Waits, all these kind of people. That when you meet them, they're so disarmingly charming and focused and they ain't got nothing to hide. They're not defensive. They're already way better than you at everything they do. So it doesn't matter. And like, so he was just, Iman was on the tour as well. So we just had a few lunches uh, with everyone and um, just really funny. How do you... He was really erudite, really well-read, really, you know, he loves, would love the art. So I, I'm a big modern art collector. I used to be, because uh, I haven't collected for a minute, but I, I do like beautiful artists. I like paintings. I have paintings in my house. I think it's really good for my boys to be around culture on the walls. Yeah. Subliminal, even if they're not looking at it. It's just, it fills the the area, the space with like intent and humanity and good feeling and mm -hmm. good energy and yep. not decorative art really like evocative and provocative art. And yeah I, you should go on I like house. that. I, I really... <laughs> naked women everywhere. <laughs> right. We like naked women. Well there's this amazing our... artist called Helen Beard. Uh -huh. She's in England and she does these incredible pastel very bright um, paintings of uh, extremely intimate you know sex toys you know just copulation, what's the word? What's the word? Yeah, all sex. Copulation, all yeah. sex. Yeah. So, uh, but I was like, I really want to get something of us, but I was, you know, I got like, you got to be mindful of having kids, uh, younger kids. So I don't want to be too, uh, you know, I really don't need sex toys on the wall for the kids. It's not right. So, but I did end <laughs> up getting the most beautiful yeah. image yeah. of two, of, of going up the stairs, a massive picture of these two beautiful women kissing. And and do the boys say anything about it? They don't that? say anything about it. They don't they don't see it. Desensitized at this point. But they but it's it's more elegiac. It's not like it's not it it's just it's just full of love. It's a positive thing. It's not right. it's nothing. It's not inappropriate or obscene or anything like that. It's because it's it's these wild colours, so it doesn't look lifelike, it doesn't look real. You you know, we obviously being not so Hollywood are a show that talk about everything outside of Hollywood too, which Encino. is parenting. What's that? Encino. Encino. The Valley. Right. We're, we're not so Hollywood. We're just da Hollywood adjacent. Um. <laughs> we're over the hill. <laughs> but we talk about everything from parenting to co-parenting to religion to whatever it is. And I think what happens a lot is that like normal people, civilians look to celebrities to see how they're doing it. How are you, you know, making it work? And so how do you make the whole co-parenting co thing work? Like there's Gwen and her family and you and the boys, like how do you guys all manage? Cause it looks pretty seamless. Yeah. I think you can go one of two ways. You can either do everything together and really co-parent and see how that goes, or you can just parent. And I think we just parent. We're mm. really different people, so we just really, we, I don't think there's much similarity in the, the way we bring them up, but I think that gives them an incredible perspective to then choose which, of, which pieces of those two lives they'd like to inherit and move on with, and which part of themselves is, it kind of um, comes out of the, whole process because that's what's important is to give them a wide view of things and we definitely have some particularly opposing views so I think it'd be really helpful for them to make their own minds as they should as individuals. No that's such a that's a great answer and it's true because you know what we always say like you do get people in here who come <clears> in and they're like we've done it so well co-parenting and a lot of them have because mm. that's like sort of the thing today. Have right. you noticed that like. Well they say they ask me that but I don't know what it really means because we we you know, you have you you have them on the time. You have them. On, well, we split the time 50-50. So when I have them doing my thing, my way, yeah. our thing, and then the other way, the other way. And I think that that uh, they're now of the age where they're starting to to appreciate which elements of either house they might take on into their adulthood, and maybe none of it. You know, maybe they'll sort of like become something different. Um, I think with all of them, you know, whether you co-parent or, or parent, and I definitely parent, it's just about, I know that wherever they are, they, they either house, they're, they're loved and supported. 
You know what I mean? And that's that's really what it comes down to. Um, trying to help them realize what they want. And it's amazing now watching them. Every week is a new development. Every week is a new thing. And uh, so it's magical for that. So I'm, I feel good. The main thing is I'm really connected to them. That's all I care about. I'm super connected to them. And do you know what I mean? Talk to them all the time and I'm with them. And so that's, I think, really essential. It'd be so sad to be any other way. Are you giving advice about the ladies because we know that you you're good with that i've been offering i tell you i sit down and say listen i had to figure out this whole th thing on my own anything you want to know anything anything so yeah. we get into it we get way into it really 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 get into it okay and then i have to end on this right because all the girls would kill me out there if i didn't are you dating you said you had a heartbreak recently yeah, a little while ago. No, I'm single right now. I'm single right now. How do you meet someone? Like through friends? Or are you on the dating apps? No um, I met the last girl I was with. I met at a, the last movie I did, at my premiere of the oh. movie. Oh. This was kind of fun and, and sort of, yeah. Um, so uh, Habit, the movie I did with Janelle um, Shirtcliffe. She's a director. Yeah, so I met her there. But so I don't know. Yeah, um, I've, yeah. I think it's better to meet them in person. I mean, I think the 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 Raya thing is good, but it's it's um I'm not sure how tangible it is. It's it, but you are on it. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've been here. They put me on it. I tried it. I well, it goes on and off. It to be honest, yeah, because you can turn yourself on and off. Oh God! And so and they all think you're faking. I'm sure they're like, this isn't Gavin, right? Yeah, it's not. It hasn't. I think it's better to meet people in real life. It just feels more organic, it, of course. It just feels better, and it, that's. But it is really hard to do that. But also, in, like, I, I mean, I've been. And on that social note, you have to go out more, so I, I can't turn down things. I have to be like, okay. Well, I also love setting there. people up. So if you want, I mean, I can just always <laughs> keep my blinkers on for you. Okay. Lastly, lastly, ready? How do you grade it? How do you rate the interview? You have to be completely honest. Or rate the interview? Yes, remember we were talking about that at the beginning. We're going to come full circle let's now. Let's let him think about it. Let me ask a music question for all the oh, music Oh, excuse me. No, no. Yes, excuse me. He's, we've got the music. No, 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 no. I love music too, by the way. I, there was a perfect time for this question. Oh. We've moved past it. But oh. now I'm going to ask it. Well, he's thinking about how to grade the interview. Okay, you can rate Steve so, too, by the way. And if he brings my grade down, I'm going to kill him after this. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you were talking about uh, Bowie, and you were talking about your influences, and then we were talking about new music. But f for all the fans of Sixteen Stone and that album with all the singles and all the hits, talking about your kids and, and what music they like, talking about Bowie, where was your head when you wrote those songs? Were you in the moment with the bands that were popular at the time? Were you looking at Bowie? Like, where was your head at? Oh, um... I'm going to have to reduce your grade because of your location. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you couldn't have sat there. It like, no, you, 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 you get a four. You get a four. I'll take a four. You That's get a D. Fine. You're but a look, D but, for location. But, but um, I can ask a decent question, but you get to look at Adriana, which is much better than having the I would. I concur. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Let me, let me answer Adriana like she answered. Ask okay. that question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just be the brains. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I was living in my uh, uh, an apartment in London with five people. Uh, me and my girlfriend were in the bedroom. My best friend was in the front room, which was living room. Which and my sister was sort of staying there at the time. Pete, my assistant, he was living in the hallway, and Nikki, uh, our friend from Canada, was living in the boiler room. <laughs> and we had a very bohemian, crazy flat, and we'd have wonderful parties and going up all night and just a lot of fun graffiti everywhere and no carpet but there was an underlay but I, I, I was always a bit feng shui a bit uptight before I'd write the songs I'd have to vacuum everywhere I couldn't take the filth so I'd have to clean feng shui space to, for my creativity and I have my little drum machine and I'd write those songs um, and I had no idea what they could do or what the future held or anything I just was trying to keep up <laughs> and just be any good and i'd been it was my third band i was in so mm. i should i feel weird that i'm not i'm not answering okay. like that it's i'm okay. like Don't my neck you. is uh yeah so those bands but i would often think about things like a bowie and the sex pistols as sort of if i ever thought a lyric wasn't good or if i could work if when i reached the end of a lyric i sort of 
listen through to those songs and be like, did I get it as good as those songs? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those lyrics, am I as good as that? And I never was, but I'm that. here now. I made it here. Did you, did you, <laughs> you, you, you vacuumed, you sat down with your guitar and you wrote mm. glycerin and mm. you're like, hey everybody. And everyone's drinking and you're playing glycerin to your five friends. Yeah. Well, when I wrote glycerin, I remember I specifically, because I went to this, this really crazy little, uh, rehearsal room in Harlesden, really rough area of West London. And I went in there and my manager of the time, who I love and miss deeply, Aww. Dave, he was there with my two, three, the three band members. And I started playing that song in this shitty rehearsal room. And then halfway through the, the song, they started, they were talking and stuff like that. And I stopped. I was like, I think this song is really good. Please let me just play the song. Aww. So I just started again. I think I started again and played it for them. And that song has taken me more places than, um, all the gasoline in the world, you know? Do you enjoy playing it still? I love it. You do? I don't have that thing about, there's some songs that if they're not quite, yeah, I don't play some songs, but I, I always, I don't, there's no song I don't like. If there's, uh, Glycerin has been, it's funny because when I think that when you make songs, they go out into the universe and you don't own them anymore. Mm -hmm. You just sort of write them and you give them away. And that's why I never say, talk about what songs are about because I think that's it's like what it was about for me the day I wrote it and then the next day it's probably about something else for a lot yeah. of things right and and if, so if, you, if someone takes that song to their heart which a lot of people have I'm really lucky um, it means what it means to them and similarly when I sing it now it's not about the person I wrote it or the combination of people I wrote it about or the different things of heartbreak at the time it's about what's going on now and so which is fascinating that's the beauty like, of lyrics but they're just pliable like they're pliable they're sort of that really just, is mm. i mean it's just standing the test of time yeah too. Mm -hmm. and they have to be because I'll, imagine body. if you went on stage and you just like just painstakingly try to sing every song exactly about what you wrote it about that minute that you just you'd be so tied up sort of uh yeah. in a straight jacket just, i like the you know i from my acting and from my studying with acting it's just it's just all about loose and the moment and just when the thought comes in that's what it's about i don't want to come back down from this cloud is usually because i've win this uh show with that yeah. is like you know from fifteen thousand people with their phones out and like people going crazy and i'm just like what a life you know what a life mm -hmm. what a life <laughs> okay I, I probably need to so you get, just... you get an a you get an a you've done a wonderful oh, job well, you've wow, done a great job you. it's really consistent questioning nice varied you you know you wanted to talk about the family stuff but you just resisted as much as you could, the very it was end. fine. That was fine. The and, very I, end. Is, and people, I, I'm happy to talk about it. You know, it's, it's, uh, um, it's, that's my life. And you know what? I always say it's like people are interested in it among every other topic in mm -hmm. your life, how you write music and where you come from and all of it. Yeah. And you're right. It's like you make headlines. People want to know about it. And so sadly, it does feel in a sense like we're being exploitative, but also it's part of the job. I think. And so if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're doing it in a decent way and not being an ass, people, people open up. And if they don't want to, you can easily say, I don't want to answer that question. Right. In a, in a, right. There's no or question. Or does it annoy you? There's no question I wouldn't answer. It's just, I would answer it how I want. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't give the answer they but want. But I do possibly. appreciate the candid feedback because people are going to listen and they're going to be like, you know what? That makes sense to me and how I run my family. And I'm glad to see somebody else does it that way. Yeah. It's just about the kids and them alone. That's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Gavin. Thanks for having me. Gavin, this was Thank great. Thank you. Thank you.